Hello everybody, it's EK from EK Gorman Designs and I am sneaking in here today with an extra special Mother's Day gift. Over at Elizabeth Craft Designs blog today, a whole bunch of designers are sharing different Mother's Day gifts that they have created and I have created a canvas featuring these romculus flowers and yes, I know I probably pronounced that wrong, we're all just going to deal with it because, yeah. So I've already created one of the flowers I'm going to use, but I wanted to show you how I colored and molded the other flower that I wanted to use. So I die cut all of my flowers out using some 90 pound white soft finish cardstock and then pulled out my Copic markers. I wanted the flower to come out peach, but not pinky peach, a very neutral brown peach. So I pulled out the E90 collection from my Copic markers and started coloring, letting the deepest, darkest colors be in the center and then blending everything out so the tips were a nice fine peach. I know it seems funny to use browns to create this peach color, but these clay colored markers really were the perfect ones to use. Then I pulled out the four piece tool set from Garden uh, Susan's Gardens and started molding my leaves. The The tools really are everything. They And the molding pad, which mine has taken quite a bit of abuse, but the molding pad really allows you to make the paper appear realistic in nature. So. Yeah. Now I've sped up this video really fast because I am not the expert. I, if you want to go see experts, definitely go look at Susan who designed these dies. Um, go see what she does with them because she really can make these things sing. I am a novice and I'm learning, but if I can do it, it just proves that anyone can do it. For the center of my ronculus flower, I wanted it more yellow and less peach and I wanted it lighter than the original. So I used a different color combination, and you're going to realize I actually mold this on the wrong side here. I mold the correct side, but once I went to go turn it, I realized I had the wrong side molded. So I flipped it over and remolded the petals so they would like open the way I wanted them to. And then using the smallest tab, I rolled up the flowers using the tweezers from the four-piece tool set. I wanted this to be double width wide, so in fact I rolled one and then I rolled a second one around the first one. Just because it gave me that really gorgeous opening I was looking for. And as you can see here, it looks like a realistic flower once you get the tweezers in there and open things up. To assemble the rest of the flower, I just took some Kids Choice glue and dabbed it into the center of the flowers, not letting any of the petals actually adhere to anything and layered all uh, two die cuts of each of the three different size petals to create a realistic looking ronculus flower. I also wanted to do a bud, so I pulled out my original combination of Copic markers and colored just the bud in that same kind of clay peach color that I did here. And on the back side, just added the lightest color so that way if you saw the bud, it had color on both sides. And then I rolled the bud up as well making sure that the good side faced outwards and the bad side faced inwards and adhered it and then smushed it flat. And I didn't open up these petals as much as some of the other petals I did on the other flowers because it's a bud after all. For the leaves, I just went ahead and grabbed a combination of greens and I wanted them to be real light and springy looking. I probably should have gone darker, but I don't think anybody's really looking at the leaves, but they're looking at the flower. To mold the leaves, and I just molded the leaves, I didn't worry about the stems, I just quickly gave a quick, with the leaf tool, um, press into it and get me the really nice shot flowers. Now, the Ronculus flowers, while beautiful, wouldn't ever be alone in a bouquet. They'd need some filler flowers, and I love the fact Elizabeth, fact Elizabeth Craft Designs creates filler flowers to go in your gorgeous flower bouquet. So I wanted to create two different filler flowers to go behind my main flowers. And I used this uh, eucalyptus frosty fern in a darker, kind of more subtle green. And I also used the baby's breath to create the two filler flowers I wanted behind. Now again, the leaves just got a quick molding. And then I used some Nouveau Morning Dew Drops to create, create the frosty tipped seedlings on the eucalyptus plant. For the baby's breath, I took the five point stars and I took about 40 of them. I stamped out the baby's breath stamp twice, or die cut out the stamp twice, and then put them on my molding pad and touched them with just the tip of my 
yellow green 11 marker just so there was a little bit of variation in the white and then using one of my cupping tools I made the flowers actually three-dimensional instead of flat and just to do this I pressed it into the molding pad I don't think this is what you're actually supposed to do reasons of why my molding pad looks as bad as it does I love the baby's breath because you can take a cut you can take two or three little of the five little flower petals of the five point power flower I can speak I really can two of the flower petals two or three of them and put them on the tips and all of a sudden it looks vivacious and bright and bushy and full like baby's breath actually does but the way it's molded actually spreads it out in a really fine effect you know it just it looks realistic to me without a whole lot of effort the baby's breath is one of my favorite ones to do because it's just simple and it's kind of mindless and that soothing relaxing kind of mindless way if that makes any sense I do use my tweezers to place each in the, each of the individual flower petals I don't know do we call baby's breath flower petals I'm not the gardener I kill flower I kill real flowers it's one of the reasons I started playing with paper flowers now I'm using a 9 by 9 wood canvas for my for what the flowers are going to sit on today and I took some um, heavy body acrylic paint and just kind of randomly placed it onto that wood canvas. Now the canvas hasn't been pre-treated with gesso so I'm just letting the wood absorb whatever paint it wants to. You're gonna notice I go through a real ugly phase here. I do all the blushing and then the fuchsia and then the gray and never cleaning my brush so I can let the colors really mold. And yes, it goes through a really ugly phase. Play with acrylic though because you can take an ugly phase and actually turn it into a really pretty background. The palette knife that I'm using here I'm just taking all those heavy panels pan, heavy chunks of acrylic that's left on the thing and just smoothing it out now I realized I needed some white to break up all of this pink that I created so I pulled out my heavy body gesso and just scraped it onto the both the top and the bottom of the panel now again it's going through that ugly face this is not in any way shape or form pretty but when you're using something three-dimensional like paper flowers on top of a canvas, you have the ability to have a simple, easy, no fuss, no muss background that isn't maybe necessarily the prettiest thing in the world, but the flowers turn it into something interesting. All you gotta do is create something visually interesting in the background for your flowers to sit on. And I think I've done that here when I, when I took the palette knife and actually started bringing the white kind of like a uh, old fence let the white kind of show through I think that got the effect where I needed it I realized I wanted the canvas to have a little bit of sparkle and shine because it is Mother's Day after all so I took the iridescent medium and just painted it on now it doesn't actually look like I've done much change here maybe I frosted it a little bit but when I move the panel you can see anywhere that the iridescent uh, medium is there's a reflective quality to it and anywhere else is just flat and it gives the canvas in real life a really stunning ability to catch some light. Anchoring the flowers onto the canvas is going to be the garden notes heart wreath, heart grapevine wreath. Sorry, I had to think. And I just glued it onto the background. Um, nothing special. I just die cut it out of some rust soft finish cardstock and glued it right there off center into the background using my little scissors. I snipped the baby's breath into two pieces and just kind of adhere to everything to my wood canvas in the way that I thought was the appropriate for to get the effect I wanted. Now I've slowed the camera down a little bit so you can actually watch me kind of place it in. If you're wondering what this tool is I'm using, it's an old clay molding tool. I used to mold clay for ornaments. Uh, it's a habit I've gotten out of, to, out of, but I love using this tool because I have both a sharp pointy push down end and a nice curve I can get glue where I want it to go end. I know a lot of people who use toothpicks but with three children in my house I promise you there's not a toothpick to be found anywhere it's used in arts and crafts by my small human beings on a regular basis. To glue the flowers on you're literally seeing me dip the bottom of the flower into the kids choice glue and then put it onto the canvas where I want it. Same with the flower leaves. I tuck I the very end of it I dip into the glue and then press under the flower. The Kids Choice glue gives you a little bit of wiggle room, which is great for that, but when it dries, it dries and it stays exactly where you want it to go. 
it's one of the reasons I know it's recommended. It's one of the reasons I use it. And this is basically the end of it. I'm taking now the um, flower bud and the stem that's meant to hold the flower bud and adhering them together. I realize the stem's longer than I want it to be, so I trim it down. And then I trim too much of it off. I, I wish I had a little bit more sticking out than I did. But I think I managed to make it work where I wanted. When I said Kids' Choice Glue gives you some wiggle time, look, I stick it in. I play with it. I try to get it to do what I want it to do. And then I even pull it out a little bit more. I did end up gluing the bud of the flower down just so it wouldn't wiggle away. I was afraid that the stem wouldn't hold itself enough. And there you go, there's the finished Mother's Day canvas that I'm sending my mother this year. I hope sh you enjoy it as much as I hope she enjoys it. And don't be afraid to try paper flowers. They're really user friendly, I promise. It's not nearly as hard as it feels it's gonna be. Trust me, if I can do this, anybody is capable of doing this. Let me know in the comments below what you're giving your mom this year for Mother's Day. And until then, happy crafting.